Hail Sphinx. Salutation from Julius Caesar. I have wandered in many lands, seeking the lost regions from which my birth into this world exiled me. In the company of creatures such as I myself, I found flocks and pastures, men and cities, but no other Caesar. No heir native to me, no man kindred to me, none who could do my day's deed and think my night's thought. In the little world yonder, Sphinx, my place is as high as yours in this great desert. Only I wander, and you sit still. I conquer, and you endure. I work and wonder, you watch and wait. I look up and I'm dazzled, look down and I'm darkened. Look round and I'm puzzled, whilst your eyes never turn from looking out out of the world to the last region, the home from which we have strayed. Sphinx, you and I, strangers to the race of men, are no strangers to one another. Have I not been conscious of you and of this place since I was born? Rome, the madman's dream, this is my reality. These starry lamps of yours I have seen from afar in Gaul, in Britain, in Spain, in Thessaly, signaling great secrets to some eternal sentinel below whose post I never could find. And here, at last, is their sentinel, an image of the constant immortal part of my life, silent, full of thoughts, alone, the silver desert. My way hither was the way of destiny, for I am he of whose genius you are the symbol, part brute, part woman, and part God, nothing of man in me at all. Have I read your riddle, Sphinx? Oh, gentlemen! Immortal gods! Oh, gentlemen, don't run away! Oh, gentlemen, don't run away! This to Julius Caesar! Oh, gentlemen, climb up here quickly, or the Romans will come and eat you! A child at its breast, a divine child! Come up quickly! You must get up at its side and creep round! Who are you? Cleopatra, Queen of Egypt! Queen of the Gypsies, you mean? Oh, you must not be disrespectful to me, or the Sphinx will let the Romans eat you! Come up, it is quite cosy here. What a dream, what a magnificent dream. Only let me not wake and I will conquer ten continents to pay for dreaming it out to the end. Take care. Oh. Oh. That's right. Now sit down. You may have its other paw. It is very powerful and will protect us, but it would not take any notice of me or keep me company. I'm glad you've come. I was very lonely. Did you happen to see a white cat anywhere? Have you lost one? Yes, the sacred white cat. Is it not dreadful? I brought him here to sacrifice him to the Sphinx, but when we got a little way from the city, a black cat called him, and he jumped out of my arms and ran away to it. And what are you doing here at this time of night? Do you live here? Of course not. I am the queen, and I shall live in the palace of Alexandria when I have killed my brother who drove me out of it. When I am old enough, I shall do just what I like. I shall be able to poison the slaves and see them wriggle and pretend to Futata Tita that she is going to be put into the fiery furnace. Mm. Meanwhile, why are you not at home and in bed? Because the Romans are coming to eat us all. You are not at home and in bed either. Yes, I am. I live in a tent and I'm now in that tent, fast asleep and dreaming. Do you suppose that I believe you are real, you impossible little dream witch? You are a funny old gentleman. I like you. Ah, oh, that spoils the dream. Why don't you dream that I am young? Oh, I wish you were. Only I think I should be more afraid of you. I like men, especially young men with round, strong arms, but I am afraid of them. You are old, rather thin, and 
stringy, but you have a nice voice, and I like to have somebody to talk to. Though I think you are a little mad. It is the moon that makes you talk to yourself in that silly way. Thought you heard that, did you? I was saying my prayers to the Great Sphinx. But this isn't the Great Sphinx. What? This is only a dear little kitten of a Sphinx. Why, the Great Sphinx is so big that it has a temple between its paws. This is my pet Sphinx. Uh, tell me, do you think the Romans have any sorcerers who could take us away from the Sphinx by magic? What? Are you afraid of the Romans? Oh, they would eat us if they caught us. They are barbarians. Their chief is called Julius Caesar. His father was a tiger and his mother a burning mountain. And his nose is like an elephant's trunk. They all have long noses and ivory tusks and little tails and, and seven arms with a hundred arrows in each. And they live on human flesh. Would you like me to show you a real Roman? No! You are frightening me. No matter, this is only a dream. It is not a dream. It is not <laughs> a dream. See, see. Fuck, how dare you? You said you were dreaming. I only wanted to show you. Come, come, don't cry. A queen mustn't cry. Am I awake? Yes, I... No, impossible. Madness, madness. Back to camp, to camp. No, 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 you shan't leave me. No, 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 don't go. I'm afraid, afraid of the Romans. Cleopatra, can you see my face well? Yes, it is so white in the moonlight. Are you sure it is the moonlight that makes me look whiter than an Egyptian? You notice that I have a rather long nose? It is a Roman nose, Cleopatra. Oh, vitamin two, Sphinx! Vitamin two! I meant to sacrifice the white cat, I did indeed! Cleopatra, shall I teach you a way to prevent Caesar from eating? Do, do, do. I will steal Patatita's jewels and give them to you. I will make the river Nile water your lands twice a year. Peace, peace, my child. Your gods are afraid of the Romans. You see, the Sphinx dare not bite me nor prevent me carrying you off to Julius Caesar. Oh, you won't, you won't. You said you wouldn't. Caesar never eats women. What? But he eats girls. And will he eat me? Yes, unless you make him believe that you are a woman. Oh, you must get a sorcerer to make a woman of me. Are you a sorcerer? Perhaps. But it will take a long time, and this very night you must stand face to face with Caesar in the palace of your fathers. No, no, I dare. Whatever dread may be in your soul, however terrible Caesar may be to you, you must confront him as a brave woman and a great queen. Oh. And you must feel no fear. If your hand shakes, if your voice quavers, then night and death. Oh. But if he thinks you worthy to rule, he will set you on the throne by his side and make you the real ruler of Egypt. No, he will find me out. He will find me out. Oh, he is easily deceived by women. Their eyes dazzle him. He sees them not as they are, but as he wishes them to appear to him. Oh, then we will cheat him. I will put on Vatatatita's headdress, and he will think me quite an old woman. If you do that, he will eat you at one mouthful. But I will give him a cake with my magic opal and seven hairs of the white cat baked in it. Ah. And I... Will eat you and your cake too. Oh, please, please, I will do whatever you tell me. I will be good, I will be your slave. Hark. What was that? Caesar's voice. Oh, let us run away. Come, oh, come. You are safe with me until you stand on your throne to receive Caesar. Now lead me thither. Oh, I will, I will. Oh, oh come, come, come. The gods are angry. You feel the earth shaking. It is the tread of Caesar's legions. Oh, oh, this way quickly, and let us look for the white cat as we go. It is he that has turned you into a Roman. <laughs> incorrigible. Oh, incorrigible. Away. Queen. Go on. Uh, 
light all the lamps. Stop! Who is this you have with you? And how dare you order the lamps to be lighted without my permission? Who is she? Tata Tita. Chief Nurse. I speak to the Queen. Be silent. Is this how your servants know their places? Send her away. And do you do as the Queen has bidden. You are the Queen. Send her away. Tata Tita. Dear, you must go away just for a little. Uh, you are not commanding her to go away. You are begging her. You are no queen. You will be eaten. Farewell. No, no, no. Don't leave me. A Roman does not stay with queens who are afraid of their slaves. I'm not afraid. Indeed, I'm not afraid. We shall see who is afraid here. Cleopatra. On your knees, woman. Am I also a child that you dare trifle with me? Slave. Yes, sir. Can you cut off a head? <laughs> Have you remembered yourself, mistress? Oh, queen, forget not thy servant in the days of thy greatness. Go. Be gone. Go away. Give me something to beat her with. love only kings. I will make all the men I love kings. I will make you a king. I will have many young kings with round, strong arms, and when I'm tired of them, I will whip them to death. But you shall always be my king, my nice, kind, wise, good old king. Oh, my wrinkles, my wrinkles, and my child's heart. You will be the most dangerous of all Caesar's conquests. Caesar? I forgot Caesar. You will tell him that I am a queen, will you not? A real queen? Listen. Let us run away and hide until Caesar is gone. If huh? you fear Caesar, you are no true queen. And though you were to hide beneath a pyramid, he would go straight to it and lift it with one hand. And then... <coughs> Be afraid if you dare. Aha! Uh -huh. Caesar approaches the throne of Cleopatra. Come, take your place. Oh, there, Tita Cota. Oh, how do you call your slaves? Clap your hands. Bring the queen's robes and her crown and her women and prepare her. Yes, the crown, Vidata Tita. I shall wear the crown. For whom must the queen put on her state? For a citizen of Rome, a king of kings, Tota Tita. How dare you ask questions? Go and do as you are told. Caesar will know that I am a queen when he sees my crown and robes, will he not? No. How shall he know that you're not a slave dressed up in queen's ornaments? You must tell him. He would not ask me. He would know Cleopatra by her pride, her courage, her majesty, and her beauty. You're trembling. No. Uh, uh, no. Of all the Queen's women, these three alone are left. The rest are fled. Good, good. Three are enough. Poor Caesar generally has to dress himself. The Queen of Egypt is not a Roman barbarian. Be brave, my nursling. Hold up your head before this stranger. Is it sweet or bitter to be a queen, Cleopatra? Bitter. Cast out fear and you will conquer Caesar. Tota, are the Romans at hand? They are at hand, and the guard has fled. Oh, oh do us. The Romans are in the courtyard. <laughs> the queen must face Caesar alone. Answer. So be it. So be it. Oh. Ah, my nursling. You've said so be it. And if you die for it, you must make the Queen's word good. Now, if you quail.
king of Egypt has a word to speak. Peace for the king's word. Take notice of this, all of you. I am the firstborn son of Orletes, the flute blower who was your king. My sister Berenice drove him from his throne and reigned in his stead. But, but... But the gods would not suffer. Yes, the gods would not suffer. Not suffer? I forget what the gods would not suffer. Let Pathanus, the king's guardian, speak for the king. The king wished to say that the gods would not suffer the impiety of his sister to go unpunished. Yes, I remember the rest of it. And my father took Berenice, my sister, and struck her head off. And now that my father is dead, my sister Cleopatra would snatch the kingdom from me and reign in my place. But the gods would not suffer. <coughs> The gods would not suffer. Will not maintain. Yes. Will not maintain such iniquity. She hath cast a spell on the Roman Julius Caesar to make him uphold her false pretense to rule in Egypt. Take notice then that I will not suffer. That I will not suffer. What is it that I will not suffer? The king will not suffer a foreigner to take from him the throne of our Egypt. Aye. Aye. Tell the king, Achilles, how many soldiers and horsemen follow the Roman. Let the king's general speak. But two Roman legions, O oh king. Three thousand soldiers and scarce a thousand horsemen. <laughs> Be so. Caesar approaches. <laughs> the king permits the Roman commander to enter. Which is the king, the man or the boy? I am Pythinus, the guardian of my lord, the king. So you are the king. Dull work at your age, eh? Your servant, Pythinus. And this gentleman? Uh, Achilles, uh, the king's general. A general, eh? I am a general myself. But I began too old, too old. Health and many victories, Achilles. As the gods will, Caesar. And you, sir, are... Uh, Theodotus, the king's tutor. You teach men how to be kings, Theodotus. <laughs> that is very clever of you. <laughs> and this place? The council chamber of the chancellors of the king's treasury, Caesar. Ah, that reminds me. I want some money. The king's treasury is poor, Caesar. My master would say that there is a lawful debt due to Rome by Egypt contracted by the king's deceased father to the triumvirate and that it is Caesar's duty to his country to require immediate payment. Now, I forgot I have not made my companions known here. For Dinus, this is Britannus, my secretary. How do you do? He is an islander from the western end of the world, a day's voyage from Gaul. This gentleman is Rufio, my comrade in arms. Mm. But Dinus, I want 1,600 talents. 40 million sesterces? Impossible. There's not so much money in the king's treasury. Only 1,600 talents, Pothinus. Why can't it in sesterces? A sesterces is only worth a loaf of bread. And a talent is worth a racehorse. I say it is impossible. We have been at strife here because the king's sister Cleopatra falsely claims his throne. The king's taxes have not been collected for a whole year. Yes, they have, Pothinus. My officers have been collecting them all morning. You must pay, Pothinus, why waste words? You're getting off cheaply enough. Is it possible that Caesar, the conqueror of the world, has time to occupy himself with such a trifle as our taxes? My friend, taxes are the chief business of a conqueror of the world. Then take warning, Caesar. This day, the treasures of the temple and the gold of the king's treasury shall be sent to the mint to be melted down for our ransom in the sight of the people. They shall see us sitting under bare walls and drinking from wooden cups. And their wrath be on your head, Caesar, if you force us to this sacrilege. Do not fear, Pothinus. The people know how well wine tastes in wooden cups. In return for your bounty, I will settle this dispute about the throne for you, if you will. What say you? If I say no, will that hinder you? No. You say the matter has been at issue for a year, Pothinus. May I have ten minutes at it? You will do your pleasure, doubtless. Good. But first, let us have Cleopatra here. Uh, she is not in Alexandria. She is fled into Syria. I think not. Call Tota Tita. Oh, there, Tita Tota. Who pronounces the name of the Tata Tita? The Queen's chief nurse. Nobody can pronounce it, Tota, except yourself. Where is your mistress? 
Will the queen favor us with her presence for a moment? Am I to behave like a queen? Yes. For Thinus. I'm not going to speak to you. Now be quiet. Open your mouth again before I give you leave and you shall be eaten. For Thinus, hear what I propose. Yes, he's an heir. Ptolemy and Cleopatra shall reign jointly in Egypt. What of the king's younger brother and Cleopatra's younger sister? There's another little Ptolemy Caesar, so they tell me. We'll make them both the present of Cyprus. Cyprus is no use to anybody. No matter, you shall have it for the sake of peace. Peace with honor, Pothinus. Caesar, be honest. The money you demand is the price of our freedom. Take it and leave us to settle our own affairs. Egypt for the Egyptians. Egypt for the Egyptians. Do you forget that there's a Roman army of occupation here, left by Aulus Gabinius when he set up your toy king for you? And now under my command. I am the Roman general here, Caesar. And also the Egyptian general, eh? That is so, Caesar. So you can make war on the Egyptians in the name of Rome, and on the Romans, on me, if necessary, in the name of Egypt. That is so, Caesar. And which side are you on at present, if I may presume to ask, General? On the side of the right and of the gods. Mm. How many men have you? That will appear when I take the field. Are your men Romans? If not, it matters not how many there are. Provided you're no stronger than 500 to 10. It is useless to try to bluff us, Rufio. Caesar has been defeated before and may be defeated again. A few weeks ago, Caesar was flying for his life before Pompey. A few months hence, he may be flying for his life before Cato and Juba of Numidia, the African king. What can you do with 4,000 men? And without money. Away with you. Be gone. Away with you. Away with you. Why do you let them talk to you like that, Caesar? Are you afraid? Oh, why, my dear? What they say is quite true. But if you go away, I shall not be queen. I shall not go away until you are queen. Achilles, if you are not a fool, you will take that girl whilst she is under your hand. Why not take Caesar as well, Achilles? Well said, Rufio. Why not? Well, try, Achilles. Rather! You are Caesar's prisoners, all of you. No, 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 no. By no means Caesar's guests, gentlemen. Won't you cut their heads off? What? Cut off your brother's head? Why not? He would cut off mine if he got the chance, wouldn't you, Ptolemy? I would. I will too when I grow up. Caesar, if you attempt to detain us... He will succeed, Egyptian. Make up your mind to that. We hold the palace, the beach, and the eastern harbor. The road to Rome is open, and you shall travel it if Caesar chooses. I could do no less, Pothinus, to secure the retreat of my own soldiers. I am accountable for every life among them. But you are free to go. So are all here and in the palace. What? Renegades and all? Roman army of occupation and all, Rufio. But, but, but... Well, my friend? You are turning us out of our own palace into the streets, and you tell us with a grand air that we are free to go. It is for you to go. Your friends are in the street, Pothinus. You will be safer there. This is a trick. I am the king's guardian. I refuse to stir. I stand on my right here. Where is your right? It is in Rufio's scabbard, Pothinus. I may not be able to keep it there if you wait too long. And this is Roman justice. Yeah, but not Roman gratitude, I hope. Gratitude? Am I in your debt for any service, gentlemen? Is Caesar's life of so little account to him that he forgets that we have saved it? My life? Is that all? Your life, your laurels, your future. It is true. I can call a witness to prove that but for us, the Roman army of occupation led by the greatest soldier in the world would now have Caesar at its mercy. Hold there, Lucius Septimius. If my voice can reach you, come forth and testify before Caesar. No, no. Yes, I say, let the military tribune bear witness. Bear witness, Lucius Septimius. Caesar came hither in pursuit of his foe. Did we shelter his foe? As Pompey's foot touched the Egyptian shore, his head fell by the stroke of my sword. Under the eyes of his wife and child. Remember that, Caesar. They saw it from the ship he had just left. We have given you a full and sweet measure of vengeance. Our first gift to you as your galley came into the roadstead was the head of your rival for the empire of the world. Bear witness, Lucius Septimius, is it not so? It is so. 
With this hand that slew Pompey, I placed his head at the feet of Caesar. Murderer. So would you have slain Caesar had Pompey been victorious at Pharsalia. Woe to the vanquished Caesar. When I served Pompey, I slew as good men as he, only because he conquered them. His turn came at last. Now the deed was not yours, Caesar, but ours. Nay, mine, for it was done by my counsel. Thanks to us, you keep your reputation for clemency and have your vengeance too. Vengeance, vengeance, oh, if I could stoop to vengeance. What would I not exact from you as the price of this murdered man's blood? Was he not my son-in-law? My ancient friend, for twenty years the master of great Rome, for thirty years the compeller of victory. Did not I, as a Roman, share his glory? Was the fate that forced us to fight for the mastery of the world of our making? Am I Julius Caesar, or am I a wolf? But you fling to me the grey head of the old soldier, the laurel conqueror, the mighty Roman, treacherously struck down by this callous ruffian, and then claim my gratitude for it. Begone! You fill me with horror. <laughs> you have seen severed heads before, Caesar, and severed right hands too, I think. Some thousands of them in Gaul after you vanquished Vercingetorix. Did you spare him with all your clemency? Was that vengeance? No, by the gods, would it have been? Vengeance, at least, is human. No, I say. Those severed right hands and the brave Vercingetorix basely strangled in a vault beneath the capital were a wise severity, a necessary protection to the Commonwealth, a duty of statesmanship. Follies and fictions ten times bloodier than honest vengeance. What a fool was I then to think that men's lives should be at the mercy of such Fools. Lucius Septimius, pardon me. Why should the slayer of Vercingetorix rebuke the slayer of Pompey? You are free to go with the rest, or stay if you will. I will find a place for you in my service. The odds are against you, Caesar. I go. Come, Achilles, whilst there's yet time. Do you suppose he would let us go if he had our heads in his hands? I have no right to suppose that his ways are any baser than mine. Oh, what? Have they left the boy alone? Oh, shame, shame. Go, my boy. I will not harm you, but you will be safer away among your friends. Britannus, attend the king. Give him in charge for that Pothinus fellow. Wouldn't this piece of goods wants to be done with him? However, I suppose I may leave that to you. Do you mean me to go with the rest? You are free to do just as you please, Cleopatra. Then you do not care whether I stay or not? Of course I had rather you stayed. Much, much rather. Much, much rather. Then I consent to stay because I am asked, but I do not want to mind. That is quite understood. Dota Tita! It is not Dota Tita, it is Fatata Tita. Fatata Tita! Tafata Tita will forgive the erring tongue of a Roman. Uh, Tota. The Queen will hold her state here in Alexandria, engage women to attend upon her and do all that is needful. Am I then the mistress of the Queen's household? No, I am the mistress of the Queen's household. Go and do as you are told, or I will have you thrown into the Nile this very afternoon to poison the poor crocodiles. Oh, no, no. Oh, yes, yes, you are very sentimental, Caesar, but you are clever, and if you do as I tell you, you will soon learn to govern. Cleopatra, I really think I must speak you after all. Must not talk to me now as if I were a child. Oh, you've been growing up since the Sphinx introduced us the other night. And you think you know more than I do already. No, that would be very silly of me. Of course I know that, but... Uh, are you angry with me? No. Then why are you so thoughtful? I have work to do, Cleopatra. Work? You were tired of talking to me, and that is your excuse to get away from me. Well, well, another minute. But then... Work. Work? What nonsense. You must remember that you are a king now. I have made you one. Kings don't work. Oh, who told you that, little kitten, eh? My father was king of Egypt, and he never worked, but he was a great king, and cut off my sister's head because she rebelled against him and took the throne from him. Well, then how did he get his throne back again? I will tell you. Beautiful young man with strong, round arms came over the desert with many horsemen and slew my sister's husband and gave my father back his throne. 
I was only 12 then. Oh, I wish he would come again. Now that I am queen, I would make him my husband. Might be managed, perhaps. For it was I who sent that beautiful young man to help your father. You know him? I do. Has he come with you? Oh, I wish he had. I wish he had. If only I were a little older, so that he might not think me a mere kitten, as you do. But perhaps that is because you are old. He is many, many years younger than you, is he not? He is somewhat younger. Would he be my husband, do you think, if I asked him? Very likely. But I should not like to ask him. Could you not persuade him to ask me without knowing that I wanted him to? My poor child. Why do you say that as if you were sorry for me? Does he love anyone else? I'm afraid so. Then I shall not be his first love. Not quite the first. He's greatly admired by women. Oh, I wish I could be the first. But if he loves me, I'll make him kill all the rest. Tell me, is he still beautiful? Do his strong, round arms shine in the sun like marble? He is in excellent condition, considering how much he eats and drinks. Oh, you must not say common earthly things about him, for I love him. He is a god. He's a great captain of horsemen and swifter of foot than any other Roman. What is his real name? His real name? Yes. I always call him Horus because Horus is the most beautiful of our gods, but I want to know his real name. His name is Mark Antony. Mark Antony. Mark Antony. Mark Antony. What a beautiful name. Oh, how I love you for sending him to help my father. Did you love my father very much? No, my child. But your father, as you say, never worked. I always worked. So when he lost his crown, he had to promise me 16,000 talents to get it back for him. Did he ever pay you? Not in full. He was quite right. It was too dear. The whole world is not worth 16,000 talents. That is perhaps true, Cleopatra. Those Egyptians who worked paid as much of it as he could drag from them. The rest is still you. But as I most likely shall not get it, I must go back to my work. So you must run away for a little and send my secretary to me. No, I want to stay and hear you talk about Mark Antony. If I do not get to work, Pothinus and the rest of them will cut us off from the harbor. And then the way from Rome will be blocked. No matter. I don't want you to go back to Rome. But you want Mark Antony to come from it. Oh, yes, 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 I forgot. Go quickly and work, Caesar, and keep the way over the sea open for my Mark Antony. Oh, Britannus. Caesar! What now? This Caesar, and two of my comrades killed in the marketplace. Uh, why? There's an army come to Alexandria calling itself the Roman army. The Roman army of occupation, eh? Commanded by one Achilles. Well? The citizens rose against us when the army entered the gates. I was with two others in the marketplace when the news came. They set upon us. I cut my way out, and here I am. Good. Uh, I'm glad to see you alive. Rufio, we are besieged. What, already? Now, tomorrow, what does it matter? We shall be besieged. Caesar. Yes, I know. Comrade, give the word to turn out on the beach and stand by the boats. Get your wound attended to. Go. Rufio, we have some ships in the West Harbour. Burn them. Burn them? Take every boat we have in the East Harbour and seize the Pharos, that island with the lighthouse. Leave half our men behind to hold the beach and the key outside this palace. That is the way home. Are we to give up the city? We have not got it, Rufio. This palace we have, and what is that building next door? The theatre. We'll have that too. It commands the Strand. For the rest, Egypt for the Egyptians. Well, you know best, I suppose. Is that all? That is all. Are those ships burnt yet? Be easy. I shall waste no more time. Caesar, Pothinus demands speech of you. In my opinion, he needs a lesson. His manner is most insolent. Where is he? He waits without. Oh, there, a bit, Pothinus. Well, Pothinus? I have brought you our ultimatum, Caesar. Ultimatum? The door was open. You should have gone out through it before you declared war. You are my prisoner now. I, your prisoner? Do you know that you are in Alexandria? And that King Ptolemy, with an army outnumbering your little troop a hundred to one, is in possession of Alexandria? Well, my friend, get out if you can, and tell your friends not to kill any more Romans in the marketplace. Otherwise, my soldiers, who do not share my celebrated clemency, will probably kill you. Britannus, pass the word to the guard and fetch my armor. Caesar? Well? You see there? What? 
A blaze already impossible. Yes, five good ships and a barge laden with oil grapple to each. But it's not my doing. The Egyptians have saved me the trouble. They've captured the West Harbor. And the East Harbor, the lighthouse roof, your... Can I embark a legion in five minutes? The first cohort is already on the beach. We can do no more. If you want faster work, come and do it yourself. Oh, good, good. Now, patience, roof, your patience. Patience? Now, who's impatient here, you or I? Would I be here if I couldn't oversee them from that balcony? Oh, forgive me, Rufio, and, and hurry them. Oh, 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 unspeakable! Woe oh, not! What now? Who is slain? Slain? Oh, worse than the death of ten thousand men! Lost, irreparable to mankind! What's happened, man? The fire spread from your ships! The first of the seven wonders of the world perishes. The library of Alexandria is in flames. Is that all? All? Caesar, will you go down to posterity as a barbarous soldier? Too ignorant to know the value of books? Theodotus, I am an author myself, <gasps> and I tell you, it is better that the Egyptians should live their lives than dream them away with the help of books. Caesar, once in ten generations of men, the world gains an immortal book. If it did not flatter mankind, the common executioner would burn it. Without history, death will lay you beside your meanest soldier. Death will do that in any case. I ask no better grave. What is burning there is the memory of mankind. A shameful memory. Let it burn. Will you destroy the past? Try and build the future with its ruins. <laughs> but Markham, the auditors, teacher of kings, you who value Pompey's head no more than a shepherd values him onion, <laughs> and who now kneel to me with tears in your old eyes to plead for a few sheepskins scrawled with errors. I cannot spare you a man or a bucket of water just now. But you shall pass freely out of the palace. Now away with you to Achilles and borrow his legions to put out the fire. You understand, Theodotus? I remain a prisoner. Uh, uh, a prisoner? Will you stay to talk whilst the memory of mankind is burning? Oh, there, pass Theodotus out. Away with you. I must go and save the library. Follow him to the gates, Papinus. Bid him urge your people to kill no more of my soldiers for your sake. My life will cost you dear if you take it, Caesar. Already there? Already? We wait for Caesar. Tell them Caesar is coming, the rogues. Britannicus! Push off all except the longboat. Stand by it to embark Caesar's garden! And where are those Egyptians? Is this more clemency if you let them go? I let the auditors go to save the library. We must respect literature, Rufio. Oh, folly on folly's head. I believe if you could bring back all the dead of Spain, Gaul, and Thessaly to life, you'd do it, that we might have the trouble of fighting them all over again. Might not the gods destroy the world if their only thought were to be at peace next year? Besides, my friend, every Egyptian we imprison means imprisoning two Roman soldiers to guard him, eh? God, I might have known there was some fox's trick behind your fine talking. Is Britannus asleep? I sent him for my armor an hour ago. Britannicus, thou British Islander! Britannicus! I am going to dress you, Caesar. Sit down. These Roman helmets are so becoming. Oh. <laughs> Uh, what are you laughing at? <laughs> You're bald! Cleopatra! <laughs> so that is why you wear the wreath to hide it. Peace, Egyptian. They are the bays of the conqueror. Peace, thou islander. You should rub your head with strong spirits of sugar, Caesar. That will make it grow. Cleopatra, do you like to be reminded that you are very young? No. Neither do I like to be reminded that I am middle-aged. Let me give you ten of my superfluous years. That will make you 26 and leave me only... Uh, no matter. Is it a bargain? Agreed. 26, mind. Oh, how nice. You look only about 50 in it. You must not speak in this manner to Caesar. Is it true that when Caesar caught you on that island, you were painted all over blue? Blue is the colour worn by all Britons of good standing. In war, we stain our bodies blue, so that though our enemies may strip us of our clothes and our lives, they cannot strip us of our respectability. Is this sword well set today, Britannicus? At Pharsalia, it was as blunt as a barrel. It will split one of the Egyptians' hairs today, Caesar. 
I have said it myself. Oh, you were not really going into battle to be killed. No, Cleopatra, no man goes to battle to be killed. But they do get killed. My sister's husband was killed in battle. You must not go. Let him go. Oh, please, please, please don't go. What will happen to me if you never come back? Are you afraid? No. Go to the balcony. You shall see us take the pharos. You must learn to look on battles. Go. That is well. Now, Rufio, march! Oh, you will not be able to go. Why, what now? We are drying up the harbor with buckets and multitude of soldiers over there. They are dipping up the water. It's true, the Egyptian army, crawling over the edge of the West Harbor like locusts. This is your accursed clemency, Caesar. Theodotus has brought him. I meant him to, Rufio. They've come to put out the fire. The library will keep them busy while we see the light. Apollodorus, the Sicilian. Why, man, what are you dreaming of? Is this Roman discipline? We are not here to watch the land, but the sea. Caesar has just landed on the Pharos. Hey, what have you here? Who is this piece of uh, Egyptian crockery? Apollodorus, rebuke this Roman dog and bid him bridle his tongue in the presence of the Tartita, the mistress of the queen's household. My friend, this is a great lady who stands high with Caesar. And uh, what is all this uh, troc? Carpets, for the furnishing of the queen's apartments in the palace. Oh, ho, ho. so uh, you are the carpet merchant. My friend, I'm a patrician, a worshipper of beauty. My calling is to choose beautiful things for beautiful queens. My motto is art for art's sake. That is not the password. It's a universal password. I know nothing about universal passwords. Either you give me the password for the day, or get back to your shop. And how if I do neither? Then I will drive this pylum through you. At your service, my friend. Oh! Thrust oh. your knife into the dog's throat, Apollodorus. <coughs> Curse on you. And then, then, let me go. Help! Oh! Stab the little Roman reptile. Spit him off your sword. How now? What is all this? Why did you not stab him? There was time. Centurion, I am here by order of the Queen. The Queen? Hmm? Oh, yes, yes, we'll pass him in. Pass all these bizarre people into the Queen with their goods. But mind you, pass no one out that you have not passed in. Not even the Queen herself. Hey, hey, this old woman is dangerous. She's as strong as three men. Is the woman your wife? No, no. Not that the lady is not a striking figure in her own way, but she is not my wife. Roman, I am Fatata Tita, the mistress of the Queen's household. Keep your hands off our men, mistress, or I'll have you pitched into the harbour. Though you were as strong as ten men. To your posts! March! Pass in there, and keep your distance. Now, 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 come within a yard of me, you old crocodile, and I will give you this. In your jaws! Go from the window. Go from the window. There are men here. I am coming down. No, no, no. Oh, what are you dreaming of? Oh, ye gods, ye gods. Apollodorus, bid your men pick up your bales and in with me quickly. Daddy Tita. Oh, that ever I was born. Daddy Tita, I've thought of something. I want a boat at once. A boat? No, no, you cannot. Apollodorus, speak to the queen. Beautiful queen. I'm Apollodorus, the Sicilian, your servant from the bazaar. I've brought you the three most beautiful Persian carpets in the world to choose from. I have no time for carpets today. Get me a boat. What whim is this? You cannot go on the water except in the royal barge. Royalty, Fdadatita, lies not in the barge, but in the queen. The touch of your majesty's foot on the gunwale of the meanest boat in the harbor will make it royal. Oh, there, boatman! Pull into the steps. Apollodorus, you are my perfect knight, and I will always buy my carpets through you. Can you row, Apollodorus? My oars shall be your majesty's wings. Whither shall I row, my queen? To the lighthouse. Come. Stand. You cannot pass. How dare you? Do you know that I am the queen? I have my orders. You cannot pass. I will make Caesar have you killed if you do not obey me. He will do worse to me if I disobey my officer. Stand back. 
Start a tea to strangle him. Keep off there now. Keep, keep off. Hold there. God. Help. Now, what is this? What now? Keep her off me. Keep her off! And make your report, soldier. What has happened? Centurion, he would have slain the Queen. I would, sooner than let her pass. She wanted to take boat and go, so she said, to the lighthouse. I stopped her as I was ordered to. Cleopatra, I am loath to offend you, but without Caesar's express order, we dare not let you pass beyond the Roman lines. Caesar does not speak to me as you do. Have Caesar's centurions changed manners with his scullion? I do my duty. That is enough for me. Majesty, when a stupid man is doing something he's ashamed of, he always declares it is his duty. Oh, well. Two more men to this post here, and see that no one leaves the palace but this man and his merchandise. To your posts, march! Apollodorus. Apollodorus, are these carpets very heavy? It matters not how heavy. There are plenty of pauses. How do they put the carpets into boats? Do they throw them down? Not into small boats, Majesty. It would sink them. Not into that man's boat, for instance. No, no, too small. But you can take a carpet to Caesar, Elliot, if I send one. Assuredly. And you will have it carried gently down the steps and take great care of it. Depend on me. Great, great. Yeah. More than of my own body. You will promise me not to let the porters drop it or throw it about. No, place the most delicate glass goblet in the palace in the heart of the roll, Queen, and if it be broken, my head shall pay for it. Good. Come, Vidata Tita. No, Polidorus, you must not come. I will choose a carpet for myself. You must wait here. You, porters, follow this lady and obey her. This way. And take your shoes off before you put your feet on those stairs. My friend. Silence there! Shut your muzzle, you. Now listen. Were you sent to watch me or to watch the Egyptians? We knew our duty. Then why don't you do it? There's something going on over there. We don't need to be told what to do by the like of you. Block it. Oh there! Centurion! Oh, curse your meddling. Hi! Hi! Hello! What now? Has the old woman attacked you again? Oh, are you still here? Uh, see there, look. The Egyptians are moving. They're going to recapture the pharaohs. They will attack by sea and land, by land along the Great Mole, by sea from the West Harbour. Stir yourselves, my military friends. The hunt is up. Yeah. Aha, I told you so. The two extra men pass the alarm to the south posts. One man keep guard here, the rest with me. Quick. Cleopatra's present to Caesar. It has rolled up in it ten precious goblets of the thinnest Iberian crystal and a hundred eggs of the sacred blue pigeon. On your honor, let not one of them be broken. On my head, be it. Into the boat with them, carefully. Uh, beware what you do, sir. Uh, those eggs of which the lady speaks must weigh more than a pound apiece. This boat is too small for such a load. Oh, thou injurious potter, oh, thou unnatural son of a she camel. My boat, sir, have often carried five men. Shall it not carry your lordship and a bale of pigeon's eggs? The men she drunk there, but God shall punish thee for this envious wickedness. I cannot quit this bay on now to beat thee, but another day I will lie in wait for thee. Peace there, if the boat were but a single plank, I would get a Caesar on it. Gently, my sons, my children. Gently, ye dogs! Do not step on it! Do not step on it! Oh, thou brute beast! Now be not excited, mistress. All is well. All oh, well. Oh, thou hast given my heart a turn. Here, ye hungry ones. How bounteous lords! How father to all the porters in the market! Hence, dogs off! Others! Farewell, Stanatita. I shall be in the lighthouse before the Egyptians. The gods speed thee and protect my nursing. Aha! Pull, thou brave boatman. Pull! So My heart, my heart, spread out thy wings. Take off thy hair below. Give me the oars, O son of a slave. The gods of the 
seas, bear her safely to the shore. Eh? Bear who safely? What do you mean? Gods of Egypt and of vengeance, let this Roman fool be beaten like a dog by his captain for suffering her to be taken over the waters. Curse it, one! Is she then in the boat? Hoy! Boatman! Hoy! Well, my British Islander, have you been to the top? I have. I reckon it's 200 feet high. Any money up there? One elderly Tyrian to work the crane, and his son, a well-conducted youth of 14. What? An old man and a boy work that? 20 men, you mean? Two only, I assure you. They have counterweights and a machine with boiling water in it, which I do not understand. It is not of British design. Well, excuse me. I came down because there are messengers coming along the mole to us from the island. I must see what their business is. Rufio, this has been a mad expedition. We shall be beaten. I wish I knew how our men are getting on with that barricade across the great mole. Egyptians cannot be such fools as not to storm the barricade and swoop down on us here before it is finished. It's the first time I've ever run an avoidable risk. I should not have come to Egypt. Long ago, you were all for victory. Yes, I was a fool. Rash, Rufio. Boyish. Boyish? Not a bit of it. Here. What are these for? To eat. That's what's the matter with you. When a man comes to your age, he runs down before his midday meal. My age? Yes, Rufio, I am an old man. Worn out now, true, quite true. Well, every dog has his day, and I have had mine. I cannot complain. Oh, these dates are not bad, Rufio. Caesar. Caesar! Of what now, Britannus? Our brave Rhodian mariners have captured a treasure there. Our enemies are delivered into our hands. In that bag? Caesar. This bag contains all the letters which have passed between Pompey's party and the army of occupation here. Well? Well, we shall now know who your foes are. The name of every man who has plotted against you since you crossed the Rubicon may be in these papers, for all we know. Put them in the fire. Put them in the fire. Would you have me waste the next three years of my life in proscribing and condemning men who will be my friends when I have proved that my friendship is worth more than Pompey's was? than Cato's is, oh, incorrigible British islander. Am I a bulldog to seek quarrels merely to show how stubborn my jaws are? But your honor, the honor of Rome. I do not make human sacrifices to my honor as your druids do. Since you will not burn these, at least I can drown them. Oh, Caesar, my great master, if I could but persuade you to regard life seriously as men do in my country. Do they truly do so, Britannus? Have you not been there? Have you not seen them? What Britain speaks as you do in your moments of levity? What Britain neglects to attend the services at the sacred grove? What Britain wears clothes of many colours as you do instead of plain blue as all solid, well-esteemed men should? These are moral questions with us. Well, well, my friend, someday I shall settle down and have a blue toga, perhaps. Meanwhile, I must get on as best I can in my flippant Roman way. <laughs> what now? Uh, what's this? Who are you? How did you come here? Calm yourself, my friend. I'm not going to eat you. I've come by boat with precious gifts for Caesar. That is Caesar, sir. Well, what's the matter now? Hail, great Caesar. I'm Apollodorus, the Sicilian, an artist. An artist? Why have they admitted this vagabond? Peace, man. Apollodorus is a famous patrician amateur. I crave the gentleman's pardon. I understood him to say that he was a professional. You are welcome, Apollodorus. What is your business? First, to deliver to you a present from the Queen of Queens. Who is that? Cleopatra of Egypt. 
Apollodorus, this is no time for playing with presents. Pray you go back to the queen and tell her that if all goes well, I shall return to the palace this evening. Caesar, I cannot return. As I approached the lighthouse, some fool threw a great leathern bag into the sea. It broke the nose of my boat, and I had hardly time to get myself and my charge to the shore before the poor little copper shell sank. I'm sorry, Apollodorus, the fool shall be rebuked. Well, well, what have you brought me? The queen will be hurt if I do not look at it. Have we time to waste on this trumpery? The queen's only a child. Just so that is why we must not disappoint her. What is the present, Apollodorus? Caesar, it is a Persian carpet, a beauty. And in it are, so I am told, pigeon's eggs and crystal goblets and fragile, precious things. I dare not for my head have it carried up that narrow ladder from the causeway. Well, swing it up by the crane, then. The crane? Caesar, I have sworn to tend to this bale of carpet as I tend to my own life. Then let them swing you up at the same time, and if the chain breaks, you and the pigeon's eggs will perish together. Is Caesar serious? His manner is frivolous because he is an Italian, but he means what he says. Leave the crane to me. Go and await the descent of the chain. Good. You will presently see me there, rising like the sun with my treasure. Are you really going to wait here for this foolery, Caesar? Why not? The Egyptians will let you know why not if they have the sense to make a rush for the shore end of the mole before our barricade is finished. Fear not, my son Rufio. When the first Egyptian takes his first step along the mole, the alarm will sound. And we too will reach the barricade from our end before the Egyptians reach it from their end. We too, Rufio. I, the old man, and you, his biggest boy. And the old man will be there first, so peace and give me some more dates. Let Caesar see. Nothing but a heap of shores. Where are the pigeon's eggs? Approach, Caesar, and search for them among the shores. Ha! Ah, treachery! Keep back, Caesar. I saw the shore move. There's something alive there. It's a serpent. There, Caesar, thrust his hand into the sack where the servant moves. Treacherous dog! Oh, please put up your swords. Apollodorus, your serpent seems to breathe very regularly. <laughs> this is a pretty little snake. Let's have the rest of you. Oh. oh, I'm smothered. Oh, Caesar, a man stood on me in the boat, and a great sack or something fell upon me out of the sky. And then the boat sank, and then I was swung up into the air and bumped down. Well, never mind. Here you are safe and sound at last. All right, now that she is here, what are we to do with her? She cannot stay here, Caesar, without the companionship of some matron. Aren't you glad to see me? Yes, yes, I'm very glad. But Rufio is very angry at Britannus is shocked. You can have their heads cut off, can you not? They would not be so useful with their heads cut off as they are now, my seabird. We shall have to go away presently and cut some of your Egyptians' heads off. How will you like being left here with the chance of being captured by that little brother of yours if we're beaten? But you mustn't leave me alone. Caesar, you will not leave me alone, will you? What? <laughs> not when the trumpet sounds and all our lives depend on Caesar's being at the barricade before the Egyptians reach it? <laughs> Let them lose their lives. They are only soldiers. Cleopatra, when that trumpet sounds, we must take every man his life in his hand and throw it in the face of death. And of my soldiers who have trusted me, there is not one whose hand I shall not hold more sacred than your head. Apollodorus... You must take her back to the palace. Am I a dolphin, Caesar, to cross the seas with the young ladies on my back? My boat is sunk. It does not matter. I will not go back. Nobody cares for me. Cleopatra. You want me to be killed. My poor <laughs> child, your life matters little here to anyone but yourself. Oh. Come, Rufio. No. No, do not leave me, Caesar. Oh. Caesar, we are cut off. The Egyptians have landed from the West Harbor between us and the barricade. Yes, it is true. We're caught like rats in a trap. Rufio. Rufio, my men of the barricades are between the sea party and the shore party. I'm 
converted. Oh, and that comes of fooling with this girl here. Look over the parapet, Caesar. Well, we have looked, my friend. We must defend ourselves here. I have thrown the ladder into the sea. They cannot get in without you. And we can't get out. Have you thought of that? Not get out. Why not? You have ships in the East Harbor. The Rubian galleys are standing in towards us already. And by what road are we to walk to the galleys, pray? By the road that leads everywhere. The diamond path of the sun and the moon. What are you talking about? I will show you. How far off is the nearest galley? Quarter of a mile. Good. Defend yourselves here until I send you a boat from that galley. Have your wings, perhaps? Water wings, soldier. Behold! Bravo! Bravo! By Jupiter, I will do that to you. You are mad. You shall not. Try not. Can I not swim as well as he? Can an old fool dive and swim like a young one? He's 25 and you're 50. Oh, Lucio, you forget yourself. I will race you to the galley for a week's pay, Father Rufio. But me, me, me! What is to become of me? Rufio, when you see me rise to the surface, throw her in. I will answer for her, and then in with you after her. Both. Oh, no, 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 I shall be drowned! Caesar, I am a man and a Briton, not a fish. I must have a boat. I cannot swim. Neither can I. Stay here, then, alone, until I recapture the lighthouse. I will not forget you. Now, Rufio! You've made up your mind to this folly. The Egyptians have made it up for me. What else is there to do? And mind where you jump. I do not want to get your 14 stone in the small of my back as I come up. One last word, Caesar. Do not let yourself be seen in the fashionable part of Alexandria until you have changed your clothes. Oh, foreign orders! Hunters reached him! Hip! 